This is Christopher Bruza, and today I am here with a Remington 870 Express 20 gauge. This is a shotgun I was curious about uh, from reading how people suggest a 20 gauge as the type of shotgun your whole family can shoot. There are not a lot of off-the-shelf options. There's a couple, uh, but nothing, nothing great. So I built this out of a 870 Express 20 gauge with a longer barrel. I don't remember how long it was. It was set up for, for bird hunting. You do a lot of reading about how this is a great shotgun for the whole family. Your wife can shoot it, your kid can shoot it. And the 20 gauge kicks a lot less than the 12 gauge. It's not true. Uh, this shotgun has fairly heavy recoil. I built it out of curiosity to see what, what would come out of it. And uh, to educate myself, it, it, it's not an expensive build. Uh, the 870 Expresses are, are fairly inexpensive. And I source most of the parts off from eBay because they're fairly scarce. Uh, eBay, Gun Broker, uh, Shotgun World, uh, a few different websites. And this is how it's been for the past couple of years. The first time I brought my wife shooting, I brought this thinking it would be something fun she, she would like. It uh, doesn't kick too much. And she took one shot and handed it back to me and said, no, thank you. Uh, and there's not a lot of felt recoil difference between a 12 and a 20 gauge, especially when you consider the receiver is smaller, the stock is smaller and lighter, the magazine tube is smaller, the barrel's smaller. All this makes a lighter shotgun, which translates into more recoil impulse. I have been mulling plans and ideas to strap an accelerometer to sh different shotguns and, and rifles uh, to compare the, the recoil impulse. Personally, I am much more sensitive to a sharp and harsh recoil as opposed to like your 4570, which is a very stiff push uh, I don't like that initial um, in engineering it, it, we'd call it jerk it's the the third derivative of position um, you've got position velocity acceleration and jerk uh, I don't like that jerk so with these tours I start the butt work my way forward and this is the OEM stock on here. It was sent to CROMs to have it cut down and a limb saver recoil pad added. Uh, I requested 12 and a half inches and it's cut at 12. When you actually put a tape measure on it, it it's a little closer to 12 and three quarters, which is perfectly fine. There are not a lot of options, which is why I, I stuck with the OEM stock. Speed Feed makes a great one, and I actually bought two of them when doing this build. They're very similar to the OEM style, but a little bit better finish, a little bit better feeling. But the fit at this receiver was bad on both of them. It didn't quite uh, line up well. There, there was a big gap here. And the butt pad just looked like it was screwed on. It didn't match the profile very well. It was slightly offset on both of them. I chalked this part up to Remington. From my understanding, Remington has changed the receiver on these. At one time, they were using a 12-gauge receiver. Um, I'm blaming 
the fit of that speed feed on Remington, not speed feed, not pointing fingers or anything. But for this, uh, the OEM one worked fine. It's nice and short. You can get it. You have squared off stance and this limb saver uh, is much more comfortable to shoot. So the receiver um, is stock. There is no opening of the port, anything like that. It, it's the Express, so it has the MIM extractor. Supposedly, the 870 Police 12 gauge extractor will fit the 12, 16, and 20 gauge. I have tried several times to get the police milled extractor to work in this, and I can't get it to work reliably. So I left the MIM. It's not a high, it's not a high round count gun where I'm gonna go put 400 rounds every weekend on it. I've never actually had the MIM extractor fail in all the 870s I've had. Um, so I, I'd love to change it out, but it's not practical. It's more reliable this way, so I'm not going to worry about it. You will see these here. I have a Mesa Tactical Plus 6 side saddle on here. It's made for the 20 gauge. And you get the, they come with two washers. The, it comes with two Chicago screws which go through the receiver. And it comes with two washers. I always add washers to both sides. I don't, the, the instructions don't tell you what side they're supposed to go on. But without them here, it's fairly close to the pin diameter. And on the other side, it sits right up against the receiver and will wear the, I think this is parkerizing, the bluing parkerizing, whatever finish you have off of it. So I actually add washers, I put them on both sides. So this is, this stands off slightly and I take clear 3M tape. It's made for automotive. It's the type of thing you put like uh, along the door edge so you don't get door dings. Put it inside of the, the door handle recess so you're, if you have long fingernails it doesn't scratch the car. I put that on the inside of the side saddle so it does not mar the receiver. No idea what other people do. And this one, when I bought it, again, 20 gauge weirdness, the countersink for the two screws on this side did not match the screws. It was, I'm not familiar with uh, Imperial countersinks and screws, you know, 110 degrees, 112, it did not fit. So I sent it to my friend who has a mill and he put the proper angle on it so it, it fits better now. But when I originally bought it, it would work, but it, it wasn't pretty. The screws stuck out. Again, 20 gauge weirdness. There's not a lot of parts out there. Apparently there's a lot of variation in these. And it's probably a self-perpetuating problem. If somebody wants to buy a 20 gauge and build it out for home defense, they don't have much product support and people probably give up or go to a 20 gauge, I have no idea. As with most of my side saddles, as we see more of my shotguns, and I love shotguns, so I have quite a few. But generally I keep four buckshot and two slugs. With 20 gauge, double lot, triple lot, uh, number four, not that common. The ammo is very scarce and hard to find. You don't have a huge selection. And what you do have is generally tailored towards hunting. So 
this is two and three quarter inch length, same as the 12 gauge. Uh, number three, buckshot, 20 pellets. That's a hell of a lot more than you get in double lot buck. And I think slightly less than you get with number four buck in a 12 gauge. So this shotgun is usually loaded with number three buckshot. And the, the box that this buckshot comes in actually has a deer on the front. It's a um, Winchester, I believe. Yeah, Winchester Super X. And I believe it's intended for deer hunting. The two slugs I keep on here are Federal and they're seven eighths ounce. Not sure if you can see with the light there. It's a fairly small slug. Uh, there seems to be a big wad in there. Which I don't know why it needs to be two and three quarter. Uh, it'd be, I think it's probably because of the wad. It'd be nice if you could fit more shells in here. This holds six plus one. Same as the 12 gauge. So the ammo is very limited, uh, it's rarely in stock. And this probably also part of the problem with 20 gauge. Coming up, this came with a hunting forend, which was large. And as you sh chucked it back, the forend would actually cover the loading port, which doesn't seem like a great idea to me. And it was more of the contoured style. I love the 870 police model, um, as you guys will see. And this resembled the 870 police. At one point, Remington offered this. This is a Remington 4 end, and I found it on some website. I forgot where, and I have not been able to find one since. But this is your police style, uh, what they call a corn cob forend. So at the time I built this shotgun, Nordic did not offer a magazine extension, and some of the other companies that typically offer magazine extensions, did not offer one for the 870 20 gauge. I was able to obtain a Remington plus two with the factory uh, barrel clamp. This is fair. It doesn't fit as nicely as the Nordic, so I definitely want the barrel clamp on there. And the spacing between the magazine tube and barrel is not the same as the 12 gauge. So putting a 12 gauge barrel clamp on there so I could put a light or something does not work. And I'm not sure, maybe somebody makes one now when I built this, this shotgun, they did not. So we got a factory extension on there, six plus one. And that brings us to the barrel. Remington offers a bead sight 18 and a half inch barrel for the 20 gauge. I did not want a bead sight. If I'm running just, you know, a front open shotgun sight, I strongly prefer a vented rib barrel. So this is the original barrel cut down to, I didn't actually measure it, 18 and a half, 18 and five eighths, whatever worked out for this, for this spacing. And it has the general, I can't, I'm not going to do it right. Yeah. It has just a general bead on here. And this is a high-vis magnetic fiber optic sight. This seemed like the easiest solution. It's got two neodymium button magnets in there and a notch which fits up against that bead sight. So under recoil, the bead sight keeps this in place and the magnet keeps it in place when you're moving, taking in and out of cases, whatever. Uh, I elected, it comes with several fiber optic um, 
strips. And I elected to use the green. I prefer green, red works well. I think it also came with white and it came with round as well as triangular. This seems to collect the light very well. It just snaps on and slides forward. The only other part we have not discussed is the sling being a OEM stock. I didn't want to just put a, a sling swivel on the side, nor did this uh, magazine tube clamp uh, work with a side mounted sling. So I just have a blue force sling in the traditional position, extends, retracts fairly easily if you need to sling the shotgun. A uh, very functional shotgun, like I said, it, it kicks pretty close to a 12 gauge. This with the buckshot kicks very similar to like a 12 gauge with field loads. So you know, it's not a 410. I'm not sure, that, I think the industry's probably figured out more than me when I built this in the, it's kind of a pointless shotgun. Might as well just run a 12 gauge with low recoil loads. Get the same ammo capacity, similar recoil, much better aftermarket support. Um, so this is my 20 gauge. I guess I'm, I'm torn on it. It's a decent gun. Uh, I don't know if I'd build it again. And I sure as heck would not give it to my son or wife as a home defense gun. They would be handed an AR instead. I appreciate you watching. Please like, subscribe so you can see when we compare the pattern to a 12 gauge. And until next time, enjoy. Mm -hmm.